Okay, everybody, we're going to start off by getting this frame all set. We're going to get it back on the car. But first, we're going to have to do some mock up. We've got to get that motor mocked up in there. It's a big block instead of the 403. Same block, though, so I can use the same motor mounts. We're changing it to a 400 turbo transmission instead of the 350. So we, that cross member has to be moved back. Best of my knowledge, it's four inches, but I've got it mocked up there. Got the holes already drilled, got the cross member altered a little bit. And I'll show you the rest. Don't mind the camera jumping around. All right, so I'll catch you up to speed. What I've done is I've taken the frame off the car. I've cleaned it up and I welded these seams pretty much solid. Well, they're solid, but it was done little at a time. It's not one continuous bead. And that's good for some cases, but it's not for everybody because you can make these frames too strong and it'll find a weak spot and it will crack. All right, so anyway, what I've done is I've set up this cross member. I went ahead and I marked these holes with a straight edge along one side, and I just scored a line to just give me a general idea of how to keep them in a straight line. It's just a, a guide. And if you'll notice, the frame gets a little bit wider here than it is up there so you have to watch this ridge right here you want that to lay all the way down the best it can so in my case I had to trim off the ends and I'll weld high quality nuts to that when I'm done so I don't have to mess with getting a wrench up there if I ever have to do any work both sides I'll do that sorry about the shadows guys And then anyway, I altered the center of it to accept a single stud or the double stud mount. And if I need to, I'll make the same pattern on a plate of steel and I'll weld it to the underside for some extra strength. I would bet that I wouldn't have to. But do be careful with your welding don't get crazy because if you weld too much at once the frame gets too hot I've heard of people turn these things into basically pretzels they're useless as a flame I wouldn't uh, they wouldn't dare bolt it back on now what I did I don't know if you can see it or not there's a piece of angle iron there I welded in now that's the exact measurements of the frame and that fits right in there I measured the frame and I welded them in a lot of spots. Most of them are removed now except for the back one. But at the bottom of the S-curve, I welded the brace. At the top of the S-curve, I welded the brace. Across the top of this, I welded one. And in the front, did all my cross measuring. And then I welded an inch and an inch and then an inch and then an inch I just kept going moving around so it didn't get too hot so we're going to mock the motor up in there small block big block doesn't matter it's all the same same block different height different bore stroke so in other words the uh, 403 mounts bolted right on there and that's what I chose because that keeps the motor slightly back on this cradle so that the weight's not in the front of the cradle let's see up here it keeps the weight back here a little more and so we're going to take care of that we're going to mock that up with the transmission I've got that set up with the slots for the 400. It's mocked up to fit in the frame. 
the holes I moved them back four inches that's usually the standard for that but we're still gonna mock it up you don't make these kind of changes and don't mock it up then we've got Detroit speed solid aluminum uh, body mounts they're anodized and I've got uh, I believe it's 17.4 stainless steel they're polished for the bolts because that's because of the aluminum you don't want to put a regular bolt in there with aluminum it's bad enough the aluminum touching the frame then we got Global West Dell Alums we're going to put those in the control arms we're going to get those back on there those are going to uh, make the upper and lower control arms behave like they're on a bearing instead of a rubber bushing that's kind of frozen you know how the rubber bushing when it's locked down the arm will spring up and spring down it's kind of stuck in a position well that'll just lift up and down with no resistance it's like a bearing so anyway we're going to get this mocked up and then we'll show you the frame with the motor and transmission sitting in it and then we'll go from there some information on this uh, the, I talked about a plate here if the uh, if I've weakened it by putting the slots in there if I would do something like that it would surely be on the underside you don't want to change the height of the mount that's gonna sit on there and I highly doubt that I would need to do that anyway and then also you want to make sure that you put this in stock position up in the other holes for the 350 and you want to measure from the frame to the center you want this to be in the same position that it was up there but if the motor does happen to sit in there sideways even just a little bit just a couple of degrees in order to line up with the rear end if you, if you move this back four inches and that angle is four inches longer that tail shaft's going to be moved over to one side too far and you want to keep it aligned so if it was 14 inches away up there which it wasn't, I think it was 15 then back here you still want it to be right in front of the rear end you don't want, just because it's longer, you don't want it to be you know, over to one side so put it back where it belongs and these here I made some plates and I put them down in there they're a little too thick so don't overthink it and think that you're building a tank because you're not but what I should have done was I should have clamped those pieces in with some vice grips and uh, just like it is now but right now it's welded in if I would have clamped that with some vice grips really really well and I would have uh, cut that out with a hole saw and then just taking the upper frame layer out moved the other one up and welded it in I would have been a lot better off and now it's just it's, it's a little thicker than I'd like to see so I might change that too okay so here we are with it mocked up motors in place transmission is in place 400 turbo instead of 350 and this worked out to where the bolts are about right about in the middle of the slots so that worked out pretty well so if it's true you want to move back four inches old schoolers on some of the Chevys they used to work with I guess it depends on the mount they used to take off the mount and just put it on the back side and it would be four inches but I didn't want to do that so I moved the whole thing back this is an F5 Oldsmobile 455 not one of the most desirable but then again what, what big block isn't desirable it'd be an F1 block that's going to go in it 
I got two of those in this F5. So everything looks pretty good. The only thing I might say is if you uh, are going to do this kind of a conversion, you might want to consider whether or not you want to uh, move the motor a little bit farther forward with a different mount. Because the last time I had this in my car, I had to actually remove the air conditioner box because the valve covers were hitting it. I want to leave it the way it is because I'm going to take some fiberglass and rework the box so I can keep the AC and everything else. So, anyway, there's future videos. We'll see you pretty soon.